Good day and welcome to the NCD Alliance webinar conference call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, it is now my pleasure to turn the conference over to Nina Runshaw, your Policy and Advocacy Director at NCD Alliance. Please go ahead, ma'am. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. This is Nina, Policy and Advocacy Director at NCDA Alliance office in Geneva. Thank you all for joining us for this last webinar in advance of the high-level meeting coming up in just two weeks' time in New York. Um, as you can imagine, quite a bit to talk about today. This is our agenda, membership transition. This is about the NTD Alliance's uh, transition as an organization. Um, WHO regional committee meetings will give you some details on how those have been going so far. An update on communications for the Enough campaign and our week of action, which was phenomenal and obviously preparations and practicalities for the high-level meeting itself. Uh, you will have opportunity throughout as webinar participants to pose questions in the chat box, and we will discuss these in the Q&A at the end of every agenda item. So our speakers this afternoon on membership and partnerships will be Liz Arnantz from NCD Alliance, then Jessica will talk through the regional committees of WHO with input from Radhika who is the Director of Health Promotion at HRI Day in India. Uh, Lucy, my colleague, will talk about the Enough campaign and the Week of Action, and then Priya will take you through the practicalities and last-minute details for the HLM. Great. I will hand over to Liz straight away. Hello, everyone. Uh, so before moving on to uh, uh, our advocacy and uh, campaign uh, topics, I would like to give you a quick update about uh, NCDA's member tr uh, membership transition. So as uh, some of you may already know, uh, uh, in 2017, NCDA uh, transitioned from an informal alliance to be a standalone NGO. Uh, this means that we are now a membership organization with an elected board and president, and therefore we have a network of members who form an NCD community, uh, which will have a very key role on NCDA's uh, work uh, and governance. This means that uh, you will be uh, members be able to vote at the General Assembly, but also be involved in governance through leadership uh, with the possibility of being nominated for Board of Directors and uh, President of NCDA. Um, the important thing uh, we want to trust, uh, communicate today mainly is that uh, we are going to be restricting access to uh, some of our resources that have been often uh, in the past nine years open to, to the public, to only NCDA members. Um, this will affect the following resources, mainly the webinars, so such as uh, today's webinar, uh, the campaign calls, so these are uh, HLM specific uh, and this will affect the upcoming, the next series uh, of campaign calls, and then the NCD Digest, uh, which is a compilation of news uh, related to health and NCDs that are sent by weekly. Uh, we are also going to start having new resources uh, for our members. Uh, these are thematic um, webinars on priority policy issues uh, where we will present uh, recent studies, policy updates, and our members vote in, uh, which will be bi-monthly, uh, with uh, global updates and country regional updates on NCD. Uh, response and pr uh, prevention and control, um, and also we will have include updates from our NCDA partners and latest events and resources. It will be a bit more comprehensive than the weekly newsletter. Uh, what I uh, we want to say is that our, the weekly newsletter will remain public, uh, so that won't change uh, for the coming uh, month. Uh, please, uh, next slide. Uh, so uh, this, uh, the change will progressively uh, be done uh, by the end of, um, of this year. We really do not want to disrupt our advocacy efforts before and after the HLM. We know the follow-up will be also very relevant for all of us. Uh, however, we still encourage you to apply as soon as possible due to the fact that the reviewing the applications may take quite a lot of time, up to six weeks, uh, since they have to be approved by the board. And uh, in addition, even though maybe those services are not already closed, you will start having access to other membership benefits, 
such as using our global communication channels, and then also uh, we are having the call for nominations for the next board of directors that is for 2019 to 2021, uh, beginning at the end of this year. So then the organizations will be able to, to, to nominate uh, your favorite candidates. Uh, next slide, please. So more on the technical side, uh, so who can apply for membership? So NCDA membership is open to uh, only civil society organizations and applications are reviewed upon membership criteria. Uh, so uh, the criteria can be found on the membership principles. Uh, if, you click, uh, if you go to the first link uh, on the bottom of the slide, uh, you will find there the membership brochure and the principles where you can find the criteria. Uh, in short, where are the membership categories? So full members are those who really want to substantially uh, get involved on NCDA's work and then access all membership benefits. For those who want just to access some benefits uh, uh, for NCDA um, and to support our objectives and activities, uh, they can uh, opt uh, for associate membership, which means uh, the big, big, bigger difference between full and associate is that uh, uh, the, the role in governance, so there won't be a vote uh, for uh, associate members uh, during General Assembly uh, meetings and uh, also there will be less priority for associate members to showcase their work on our communica uh, communication channels and events uh, in terms of the invitations we will be distributing for our members. Uh, we also have a network um, membership category for those who just want, wish to still receive the weekly newsletter and there is no fee applicable to this category, the network membership. Uh, so the fees um, are annual and they have a tired uh, structure which is based upon the category, so full or associate, as I mentioned, network membership will be, uh, uh, there, as there is no fee involved, and it will also depend on the, on the income level of the country where the organization is based. So, for instance, um, the, the fee will be different if your organization is based on a lower middle income country than if it's based on a high income country. This, is, uh, this aims to really try to have organizations from really every part of the community, of uh, NCD community, and from everywhere in the world. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, I would like just to cover very quickly a few more tangible benefits of, of, uh, of uh, uh, NCDA membership. Um, so in short, the main overall benefits of being a member of, of NCDA is being part of a community, the NCD community, and have a, a stronger voice uh, uh, at the end, uh, for the NCD agenda, but then also have more visibility through the network and also have more access to in, um, uh, last minute insights and information, uh, build more organizational capacity for your own uh, organization, connect with experts, and then also, as mentioned before, role in governance and strategy of NCDA. Uh, so here I, there is a collage of, of things you, you could get to so for instance, access to the membership, uh, you know, to the, the, the communication channels, use, uh, have news, blogs, uh, <laughs> posts on, on our website, then also being mentioned on several publications that we do have access to our network of NCD um, alliances at uh, national and regional level, which means that it could provide you more uh, capacity to work at country and regional level. Uh, for instance, there is small piece of the what will be the members full time in the future. And uh, the same, you can see pictures of the events we do. So for instance, this come from the uh, Global NCD Alliance Forum, which is organized every two years, and where we have several interactive sessions, all members get invitations, and then also access to our advocacy briefings, uh, meetings prior to the WHA and UNGA, which uh, for instance will be also close to, to members in the future. Uh, and other sources of information such as NCD Jest and peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning among members. Something very important I want to, to mention, and I don't want to go very long onto this, is that uh, members will have access to a member-only area on our website uh, to which you know, they can submit um, proposals for communication pieces on our website uh, to register for events. All the nominations for the board, NCD board, will be also channel through the member only area. So that is something I think uh, will be very valuable for those who join our committee. And 
yeah, that's it. I'm happy to answer any questions. And if not, I think we shared on the previous slide uh, the email address. Uh, so happy to, to get any email through, <laughs> through that and answer your questions. Thank you very much, Liz. I don't think we have any questions coming to us in the chat box at this point. Um, feel free in the next couple of minutes if you do have any questions for Liz. And as she says, um, you can contact us by the NCB Alliance Secretariat and Liz in person if you do have any questions or uh, issues that you want to take up. We should say at this point, thank you very, very much to those organizations who have already signed up to join us as members and um, to everyone else. Uh, Please don't hesitate to come to us with any questions. We really look forward to welcoming you on board um, in this next exciting phase for the NCB Alliance and um, look forward to working with you all as members in the future. I think that's going to be going to be great. Thank you very much, Liz, for that section. Um, the next one is WHO Regional Committee Meetings, for which I'm handing over to Jess and Radhika. Thank you very much, Nina. Um, so it's just very brief comments from me, and then Radhika will take us through um, substantially more detail on the Sierra Regional Committee meeting, which took place last week in New Delhi. Um, so there have been two WHO Regional Committee meetings that have taken place so far, um, one in Afro and one in Sierra. Um, unfortunately, the representative um, from the NCD, um, the primary representative, I should say, because happily the NCD Alliance Network was out in force at the Afro RCM, um, but unfortunately, we couldn't have an update because he's travelling today, and so hopefully we'll hear from him in the future. Um, but you can see the dates here for the future webinars that are coming up um, through from the end of this month um, up until the middle of October, um, and the topics that will be covered at all of them. So it's really, really diverse. Um, NCDs aren't discussed specifically in all of them, but plenty of other relevant agenda items are in the cases where NCDs um, in and of themselves are not. Um, we would love to hear from you if you're going to any of them. Um, we, although the NCD Alliance Secretariat doesn't attend the regional committee meetings ourselves, um, we're fortunate enough to have an overview of the people who are often there, and we would love to link everybody up and to coordinate a little bit in advance of the meeting. Um, so I will now pass over to Radhika um, to give us some updates from what was discussed at the WHO Sierra regional committee meeting. Over to you, Radhika. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Jess. So um, our uh, regional committee meeting was well timed, actually, with the global action, uh, global week of action for um, NCDs, and um, we had a good uh, uh, representation from the uh, 11 member states, the health ministers and senior health ministry officials from the 11 uh, member states of the CR region um, in participation. Uh, we also had our elections for the regional director uh, planned, uh, and, and she was, Dr. Poonam Khetrapal Singh, was re-elected for her second term as the regional uh, director for WHO uh, for the Southeast Asia region. Um, uh, next slide, please. Uh, so in terms of the um, uh, agenda uh, items, uh, 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 unfortunately, NCDs did not feature in the main program um, and, uh, agen and agenda of the uh, meeting as, as such, but there was a, a side event which was dedicated to preparations for the high-level meetings um, on tuberculosis and NCDs. Um, this was... Uh, at the, on the first day of the regional committee meeting, uh, chaired by the health minister of um, Indonesia. And it started off with uh, updates from the directors uh, at WHOCRO of the communicable as well as the non-communicable disease division. So the director of the communicable disease division obviously talking about the TB, uh, UNHLM, and the NCD director talking about uh, the NCD uh, uh, UNHLM. Uh, from the perspective of um, the, uh, uh, the NCD Alliance and the Healthy India Alliance and its member organizations, um, we had the opportunity to uh, present a statement on behalf of PHFI, uh, of course, with support from the Healthy India Alliance, the Framework Convention Alliance, NCD Alliance, and the World Heart Federation. Um, uh, and uh, primarily, uh, you know, the, the statements uh, focused on uh, the, the main areas listed here. One was 
to ensure attendance at uh, the, uh, high level attendance at the UNHLM. Um, unfortunately, uh, till now, to the best of our knowledge, out of the 11 um, member states, we only have three whose head of state or head of government is being uh, represented uh, at the UNHLM. Um, and this is, uh, I mean, we, uh, we tried to g g gather some intelligence on this, but this is um, uh, because of other uh, national commitments around that point in time. Um, I can say uh, from from India that on 25th of um, uh, on the 25th of uh, September, we are launching uh, one of uh, our biggest um, health uh, programs in the country, which is being prioritized by the Prime Minister. And so the Health Minister and a lot of senior officials at the Health Ministry are engaged um, with that event. But yes, we are still trying to um, sort of get some um, senior level participation from the Government of India. And then, of course, the other uh, point which was covered was to promote a One Health approach in the lead up to uh, and beyond the HLMs and NCDs and TB, facilitate partnerships to ensure a whole of society approach in addressing NCDs, and a strong commitment to accelerate uh, FTTC uh, implementation, and of course, tax on unhealthy uh, commodities. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, there are some more uh, uh, statements uh, which are focused on uh, three uh, main agenda items which were uh, largely uh, facilitated by the World Health Federation, uh, the NCD Alliance, and the Healthy NDA Alliance, uh, 8.3 being on a regional progress in survival of newborn children and mothers, 8.5 uh, on annual report on monitoring progress on USC and the health-related SDGs, uh, there were two statements where uh, Health India Alliance um, and NCD Alliance were engaged. One was um, uh, led by the World Heart Federation, and the other one was by the International Alliance of Patient Organizations and the Indian Alliance of Patient uh, Groups. And um, lastly, uh, item 9.2, which was on promoting physical activity in uh, the Southeast uh, Asia region. Next slide, please. Um, so um, at the end of the um, uh, RC meeting, there was the Delhi Declaration, which was um, adopted, which the document is not in public domain yet, but we do know from the press release that was issued by uh, WHO and, and the media reports that it essentially uh, focused on making essential medical products accessible and affordable to all, both within the region and beyond and uh, strengthening emergency medical teams uh, to enhance preparedness in the WHO re uh, Southeast Asia region, which is prone to uh, several natural disasters, uh, particularly in the last um, uh, two to three years. Um, so some of the pictures that you see on this slide are of daily physical activity sessions, which were organized um, uh, for the member states, and they enthusiastically participated. and. Uh, we were very encouraged to see um, engagement of people living with NCDs uh, in, in these physical uh, activity sessions as well. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, there were a couple of um, you know, important uh, reports, documents, updates uh, that were released uh, from the regional uh, perspective, which um, are again um, something which are helpful for us to plan forward our advocacy and make a case for strengthening action on NCDs and SDGs. So one was the 2018 update um, on uh, monitoring progress on the US, on USC and um, um, uh, SDG um, three and other health related SDGs. So this particular report um, has a, a country profiles for each of the member states and um, is, is, is a good um, um, resource for us to plan future action. And then there was a status report on physical activity uh, and health, again, clearly prioritizing the need to strengthen this component uh, when it comes to um, you know, addressing NCD risk factors. And um, there was a regional um, a st a strategic guidance released on accelerating action for um, adolescent health. Uh, 
um, in, 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 the, in, in, the, in the region. And um, so uh, that's it uh, from me um, in terms of the regional committee um, uh, meetings. And uh, uh, later uh, during the webinar, um, you know, Lucy will be uh, speaking about the, um, the work of or during the week of action. But um, you know, the, the slides that you see on your screens right now is basically on um, some of the, uh, uh, one of the uh, areas that we uh, focused on uh, during the week of action was on uh, youth as well as uh, people living with NCDs. So the pictures that you see here are from uh, these uh, regional consultations that we organized, um, some of them during the week of action, where uh, our uh, people living with NCD champions are working to develop a consultative national agenda for people living with NCDs, uh, much inspired by the global work that uh, the NCD Alliance and other partners have done. So that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Uh, I don't think we've had any specific questions on the regional committee meetings. We have had a question on uh, the HLM and which heads of state and government are attending. We will get to that in the final part of the presentation. We have a slide uh, with the current count. Um, so definitely stay tuned because that, that's looking really impressive. Now I'm going to hand over to Lucy to talk about the end campaign and some more snapshots from our week of action. Thanks, Lucy. Hello, everybody, wherever you are in the world. It's great to be speaking with you today. And I'm just going to do a, a relatively quick recap on the brilliant week for action that we uh, led last week and just a little bit more information on communications between now and the HLM and even beyond. Next slide, please. So firstly, um, thank you to everybody who got involved and engaged with the, the Week for Action, at least online, which is a pretty good indicator of the engagement. We had uh, thousands of tweets from dozens of countries in dozens of cities and uh, certainly millions of people were reached by the Week for Action and conversations and information about NCDs, those advocacy messages were certainly getting out there in English and other languages as well and uh, in all regions. So it was brilliant to, to see that. Uh, please do, if you were involved with the Week for Action through your organisation in any way, please do continue to share the, uh, the information with us about those events and activities. Uh, we are collating them and we'll be sharing a, a bit of an update uh, later in the year about how the week went and uh, trying to understand how, how to continue the, the momentum from the movement. Uh, next slide, please. So here's a bit of a snapshot of what we saw. One of the highlights of the week was certainly NCD Child launching or announcing the winners of their uh, youth art contest on NCDs. Now you can see some of those in the top right hand corner and I encourage you to go to the NCD Child website for more on that. Uh, we saw lots of digital activity, uh, so the Rwandan NCD Alliance had a Twiven campaign as well as lots of things happening on the ground. Uh, in Cameroon they've launched, announced the launch of a physical activity program linked to the Enough campaign and NCDs. Um, we've had some media activity, other organisations launching specific advocacy messaging. So it was a really successful event for quite a lot. Next slide please. Uh, apologies for the photos that seem to have disappeared from, from here, um, but we've uh, obviously seen lots of people who didn't necessarily get the opportunity to mobilise on the ground get, uh, get active online as well. So UNFCN, for example, had some workplace health promotion activities and uh, trans transferred that into some online activities as well. Healthy Caribbean Coalition continued to campaign for high level attendance at the meeting as did the UK Working Group. So there were, um, there were lots of... Uh, people adapting resources that were existing, sharing quotes and making sure that their, their messages were resonating around the world. Next slide please. In terms of on the ground, you can see um, the Sri Lankan NCD Alliance quite active and had some really excellent um, translations 
of the Enough logo and uh, images which they put together, bringing together communities of people living with NCDs and made their, their voices heard that way. Um, we also had activities in, as Radhika was explaining earlier, uh, India, Myanmar, Egypt, um, Geneva, the Caribbean. So there were, were lots of things happening. Next slide, please. And even some TV appearances as well. Um, next slide, please. So even on relatively short notice, with uh, being the first week of Week for Action that we've ever ever led. Um, it was actually an incredibly successful um, momentum building and driving week and we were thrilled to thrilled to see so much engagement and we encourage everybody to not let it stop there and to continue on beyond the week as we lead up to the HLM but also beyond the HLM and really call for the, the champions to stand out and be leaders for amplifying the, the advocacy messages that we're all so um, committed to uh, which we'll be sharing more of in the coming week. Also, and um, yeah, please do continue to be active and share through social media or through emails what, what's happening where you are. Um, still, the Enough campaign continues on. So we've got the NCD Champions um, element, which we've been continuing to uh, identify new champions, and you will see some of them here from uh, Latin America, from Europe, India, the US. Um, so again, please, if you have any uh, ideas for champions that could be um, celebrated on through the Enough campaign, please do let us know. And also, we continue to populate our website with voices of change. So if you have advocacy messages as an individual, please, again, jump on the enoughncds.com website and add them there, and we'll be publishing those over coming days as well. Next slide, please. Our um, map of impact has continued to be populated. Um, it's, it's showing uh, all sorts of activities from pledges to news and activities and uh, also voices of change on, uh, on the map. So again, we'd love to see more, more dots appear on there in all sorts of different places. It certainly reflects a, a snapshot of what's been happening around the world and we know that there's been a lot more. So it would be great to fill it up a little bit further. Next slide, please. We've got some uh, new videos that we've been publishing over the recent weeks that have been in development for a little while now. Um, they're themed on NCDs and the SDGs, uh, partnerships, and there's also one from Columbia, um, which would be e excellent for you to have a look at, but also to share through uh, your channels as well. Also, our CEO Katie Dane and Adam Capati from Vita Strategies were both at the UN Cor Correspondents Association yesterday for a media briefing on NCDs, and the video for that is now online, so you're welcome to check that out and uh, see if there's anything there that would be helpful for your own media communications. Um, again, the, the main playlist of videos is still there and useful for sharing with, um, with your communities. And there's quite a few publications coming up today. There was a launch of some new cancer data that um, will be quite useful to, to see and is quite alarming. We've also got a global status report on alcohol coming out next week. Um, linked to that is a um, new publication that's been developed in conjunction with Vital Strategies, um, GAPA, uh, IOGT International Health on alcohol policy. Um, it is, and that's coming out in a, in a week or two as well. And then we've obviously got NCD Countdown coming out, which um, which is an exciting development. So we um, encourage you to keep an eye on our newsletter and our social media, and we'll be sharing as much as we can in the lead up so that you can use anything useful in your advocacy as well. Next slide, please. I won't go through this in detail because you will get a PDF of the slides if you check our website in a couple of days and we'll also be sharing some of this information through emails and um, our website. Um, this is a bit of an overview of what our plans are for social media during UNGA and the HLM week. Again, we'll be mostly using the Enough NCDs hashtag which will be mainly monitoring and amplifying. Um, so if you add it to anything that you would like to, to see shared then we will do our best. Um, again, follow the live stream, share the highlights. Um, if you're at any of the events yourself, please uh, share and cover live for anyone who can't be there and also to capture history. Um, and, and 
for those of you who are strong advocates, do keep up the pressure. Uh, we need to really make a strong point that we need to translate HLM3 into action in the country and really put pressure on, on governments to, to tell us what they're going to do next. So uh, again, all our resources are still on the Enough NCDs website and we encourage you to check it out and um, follow along and continue with the, the movement's momentum. Thanks everybody. Thank you very much, Lucy, and thank you so much to everybody that was, again, part of the Week of Action um, and has supported the Enough campaign. This, the support's been phenomenal, um, and we do really feel like it's moving things along, and, and obviously that pressure has, at the very least, uh, translated into lots of political interest from heads of state to come to New York and be seen to be present and committed to NCD's issues in New York, which, which is going to be fantastic and is a really good news story for a couple of weeks' time. Um, there were lots of hyperlinks in that last part of the presentation and in fact throughout. I appreciate you can't click on the slides that you can see on your screen right now, um, but the slides will be made available on the NCDA website. Um, Jess has just shared the link with you all in the chat box. So after um, we're offline at the end of this call, you'll be able to access those and then the links will be live and you'll be able to see everything that Lucy uh, and the others have been talking about and encourage you to do click through on those and participate as much as you can. That, that's really fantastic. Thanks very much. Um, and now for the preview of what's coming up at the HLM and, and some practical details, I'm going to hand over to Priya, who is our colleague in New York. Thanks, Priya. But just before we pass to Priya, um, I'm going to jump in very quickly and just update on a new initiative called NCD Countdown 2030. Um, some of you will remember um, a brief period um, back in 2014, 2015, where there was an NCD Countdown 2025. Um, it's now back with even greater force um, as NCD Countdown 2030, and this is a collaboration between WHO, The Lancet, Imperial College London, and NCDA, and we're really glad to be, to be part of it. Um, and it's a mechanism for independent accountability, and so it fulfills the recommendation made in the WHO Independent High Level Commission on NCDs um, report, Time to Deliver um, on Accountability and specifically Independent Accountability Mechanisms. And in this way, it really complements WHO's existing monitoring frameworks. And, and there is a major study um, that will be the first product of NCD Countdown 2030 that will be published in The Lancet um, exactly one week prior to the HLM um, on Thursday the 20th of September um, in the evening UK time. Um, and it will include really detailed national level data on which countries are on track to achieve SDG target 3.4 um, and crucially also which are not. Um, and it will be quite different to the releases that WHO is normally able to do on this topic um, given that NCDA um, and the other collaborators have much more freedom in terms of ranking countries uh, which is something that is quite politically sensitive for WHO and not something that they're easily able to do ourselves. Um, so we're really glad to be able to be using WHO data and um, to reiterate um, the messages that we always um, try to put out, but in an even stronger way. Um, and this initial paper in The Lancet, um, which we'd be really grateful to people for promoting if it turns out to be of interest to you, um, will be followed by annual updates, but also complementary comms and advocacy products that assess country progress on risk factors and policy implementation. Um, whereas this first paper will be largely focused on mortality. Um, and we hope that overall everything that NCD Countdown 2030 produces um, will, will offer some unique tools to be supporting national level action and accountability. Um, and we'd love to hear from people if they find it to be useful later on in the process. Thank you, and back to you Priya. Thanks very much Jess, Thanks, and Jess. I think the NCD Countdown 20 2030 initiative is um, something that's, that will become really important, especially as we move into the post-HLM phase of our work and really looking at holding governments to account for the commitments they've made in uh, 2018, but also in 2011 and 2014. Um, so moving right into um, where we are right now, we are finally at the end of uh, what's been a very long period of negotiations. Uh, next slide, please. So update, 
on the draft political declaration. And currently, discussions are underway on the TRIPS language in the draft political declaration on NCDs. Um, as you might have been aware and we communicated earlier that there was one paragraph in the draft declaration that, of the text that we had shared. Um, the last version was the 27th of July. That was still outstanding and that was the paragraph on the, the intellectual property rights and access to medicines and such. So, um, so that is still, that is underway and the latest updates on TRIPS is that as of yesterday, um, member states reached an agreement on the TRIPS language in the draft CB declaration. Um, and this is relevant for NCDs because the same issue, TRIPS, in NCDs has been holding up the TB declaration. So the draft TB declaration is now under silence procedure until 10 a.m. Friday, the 14th of September. Silence procedure basically means that the document is circulated under the the, uh, with the understanding that the text has been provisionally agreed by all delegations, all member states. Um, and if it gets through to Friday at 10 a.m. without anyone breaking the silence, then the draft moves forward for adoption by heads of state and government at the HLM on tuberculosis. Uh, the uh, draft declaration on TB was put under silence in July, uh, but it was broken by South Africa again on that TRIPS language. Now that a compromise has been agreed, however, we expect that the TRIPS language on TB will be adapted for the NCD's political declaration. The language will then be circulated to all delegations for approval, and if provisionally agreed, then the entire document as a whole will enter silence procedure. We are therefore expecting to see a final version of the political declaration on NCDs by Friday. Um, we are very much in the final days, the final countdown, if you will, uh, because next Monday, per UN processes, is the deadline for all General Assembly resolutions, and the new president of the General Assembly takes office on Tuesday the 18th, which is the, the new session of um, the GA. So this is very much now the final few days. Um, again, there has not been an updated version of the NCD text, that document um, that we had shared previously and that is dated the 27th of July, is still the uh, latest version except for OP20, um, which is the language on TRIPS. So if you'd like to get a sense of how that TRIPS language changed, I encourage you to look through the almost final TB da uh, draft declaration, and we've provided the link for that. Next slide, please. So who are the heads of state and governments that are likely to attend? As of now, we've heard of 53 heads of state and government. Uh, there are still a few more days, likely until Friday, for uh, countries to indicate who will be attending on their behalf. Uh, as you can see, this is actually the first time that the President of the General Assembly has divided up speaking slots per UN regional group, um, which has some benefits. Uh, for one, we can see who has confirmed for, for the region. As you can see, the African region has really turned up. Um, Asia Pacific has also turned up. Gulak, um, which, is, which is Latin American region, um, and the Caribbean as well. Uh, however, it's, it's fairly disappointing to see that Eastern Europe and, and Western Europe uh, have really not had that many heads of state and government um, commit to attend. Of course, this is still very much a moving beast. Um, the, as you can imagine, some heads of state and government do not advertise or publicize their movements this far in advance. So we expect to see perhaps a different, um, a slightly changed list in the coming weeks as, as more heads confirm their attendance. But for now, these are, these are the 53 heads that we are expecting, and these are the heads that will speak in the plenary session. Next slide, please. This is a visual breakdown of how the UNHLM on NCDs will go on the Thursday. Um, if you are attending the HLM, then when you registered, you are required to register for either Conference Room 4 or the ECOSOC Chamber. Uh, conference Room 4 are the blue blocks there, and the ECOSOC Chamber, the multi-stakeholder panel sessions, are those reddish blocks. 
Um, in the plenary segment and conference room four, only member states, so heads of government, ministers, UN agencies are speaking. Um, for the multi-stakeholder panel sessions, there are opportunities for registered stakeholders to speak, and I'll talk a little bit more about that soon. During that lunch break between 1 and 3 p.m. is when quite a few side events take place, and these are the normal working sessions of 10 to 1 and 3 to 6 p.m. for UN meetings. Next slide, please. Moving a little bit into the logistics, um, as I know some people have asked about this, um, all registered stakeholders attending the HLM will receive detailed information from the UN Secretariat about where and when to pick up their special event passes. Um, and those special event passes are what will grant you access to UNHQ. If you hold a current valid UN grounds pass, for NGOs, those are N for NGO or T for temporary badge. They do not grant you access to HQ during UNGA. And uh, this is because of heightened security. Only delegate or staff badges are able to cross the security perimeter. You must bring a government issued photo ID in order to receive your pass and enter. Special event passes, they are actually printed with your name on them as it was listed in your registration and are non-transferable. Um, again, as I mentioned, there's heightened security throughout the week. Um, the screenshot there shows what the perimeter, security perimeter will roughly be. That means there are actually physical barriers on the streets of New York with NY police, New York police um, and other security forces there uh, monitoring the perimeter. As you can imagine, again, the world's uh, presidents and prime ministers are convening in one location, and that too in New York City. Um, the security checkpoint is where the Blue Star is, and that's at 42nd, uh, sorry, 46th Street and 2nd Avenue, which is where most events um, and event organizers who are organizing events inside UNHQ request participants to meet. However, logistics for side events that are taking place inside UN headquarters will be sent by event organizers, so I encourage you to wait to receive that information. Just be aware that um, security and traffic around that area is, is quite intense during this one week. And so really encourage everyone to take advantage of the walkability of New York City if they can as much as possible. A couple other logistical things that related to security to keep in mind. The UN does not allow entrance of people who are wearing t-shirts or shirts with logos. Uh, so if you are wearing a shirt with a logo, you will likely be asked to change or to leave. Um, and they also ask you to bring an empty water bottle and fill it inside HQ, um, and that it, you are going through airport-like security. Next slide, please. Final thing on logistics. Um, again, registered stakeholders will be able to make brief two-minute statements from the floor during the multi-stakeholder panel sessions. Again, those are in the ECASOC chamber. Priority will be given to heads of state and government and UN agencies first. However, we've heard that if by, we've informally heard, I should say, that if by 12.30 p.m. in panel one and by 4.30 p.m. in panel two, the list of member states has not yet been exhausted, then the President of the General Assembly or PEGA will automatically open it up to um, stakeholders in the room to speak. Again, your statement has to be two minutes, otherwise your mic will be turned off. Um, there is no predetermined speakers list. Uh, interested speakers, uh, again, may indicate that they'd like to speak by pressing the microphone button at their seat. Um, there is no, again, predetermined speakers list. Only, and one thing to reiterate again, only heads of state and government and ministers speak in the plenary segment, which is again in conference room four. It's likely that you will not be able to move in between rooms. Conference room four and the ECASOC chamber are not next to each other, so you do have to go through security, and it's likely that there will be security standing outside checking people's passes to see which room is on their pass. Again, this is pending confirmation from the UN Secretariat, but do not expect that you will be able to move in between rooms. As you can imagine, there's a capacity issue, so you will need to um, you will indeed need to attend the HLM for the, in the room that you have registered to prevent any issues with security. 
Um, again, for side events inside HQ, make sure that you're RSVPing for all of those events because you will require a special event pass. Um, and uh, NCDA, again, cannot facilitate invitations or registrations for events. So really encourage you to reach out to organizers yourself. Um, at this point, we have not been advised by the Secretariat that there is an opportunity to submit written statements. But if that does arise, then we will indeed communicate, communicate that via email and on our website um, and social media. Next slide, please. So moving just finally uh, into side events during UNGA, um, the week really kicks off on Sunday the 23rd. And we can just move through quickly through these next few slides as um, the link is available at the end. But really from Sunday all the way through to Friday, um, the days are quite busy from early in the morning. Some days start at 7.30 uh, or 8 a.m. Uh, to evening session. So really encourage everyone to make sure they're looking through and RSVPing and registering for for events. Um, and then if you have an event that you are hosting that you do not see in the calendar but would like to have included, please do let us know. And I will pause there for any questions. Thank you very much, Priya. I think most of the questions that had been raised in the chat box you have already answered. So thank you very much for that. In which case, nothing else is coming up. So we will move on. Uh, to the next slide, please. And this is just what happens next. So in now the, the two weeks of run-up before the high-level meeting itself, we would ask all of you to keep calling on your heads of state and government for highest level of attendance. Obviously, this has been going extremely well. Um, but you know it's an extremely important political signal. The more heads of state and government are in attendance and make positive statements about 18, that would be all to the better. So if you do have uh, good working relationships with your government and connections uh, to the heads of state and would be in a position to suggest any speaking points, then that would be fantastic. Um, obviously, we're on hand to help if um, that's something you would like us to do, so please feel free to get in touch. We will, of course, be analyzing the final political drafting a civil society response uh, for exchange with our civil society colleagues and further development. Um, we will be, as was already mentioned, continuing to do media outreach. Uh, we had a, a press event in New York yesterday where Katie was speaking together with Vital Strategies about what we expect so that journalists are well briefed on what's coming up and what likely points of contention are going to be. Um, so we expect to see some good coverage off the back of that. Journalists know, uh, know where the flashpoints are going to be. And in New York, um, civil society groups, we really look forward to seeing you at our advocacy briefing, which is on the afternoon of Monday. The registration link is in the slides. Um, there's already really good attendance, so be quick to snap up some of the last uh, spots. And then um, coming soon, our key messages for the HLM on NCDs and UNGA Week. Look out for those, and we will put in writing uh, some of what Priya has just communicated, our guide to logistics um, for the HLM week, and also some social media accounts that you can follow. So even if you're not on the ground in New York, you can be very much involved and up to speed with what's going on as it happens. And if there's no more questions, it doesn't seem to be the case, then thanks very much, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, all the best also in the run-up to the HLM, and we look forward to giving you a debrief um, at our next webinar, which will be in October. We'll confirm the dates nearer the time. Thanks very much for joining us, and talk to you again soon.